I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Are you ready to learn about multi-orgasmic men in non-ejaculatory orgasms? Well, I'm actually going to learn with along with all of our listeners because I wasn't on this recording, so it'll be a surprise. It'll yeah. be surprendido. Surprise. Surprendito. I forgot what you had going on. You had something something big. But at any rate, they were wonderful humans, uh, Shasta and Ian. I learned some things, and I love learning about non-ejaculatory orgasms because they're kind of baffling. And we're speaking to penis owning orgasms, but not vulva owners. Um, a lot of vulva owners don't ejaculate, um, and a lot do also do. So there's some interesting things, some facts, some tips. If you want to learn, some people are like, why would I want to do that? But also, here's the reason why: multiple orgasms, not just that one and done. I can keep going. Pleasure on pleasure on pleasure. Did I sell you on it, Chip? Actually, yeah. You Chip, did. I have a story for you. Oh, so the other day, my partner decided that it was time to give me an extended vulva massage, which drives April crazy. She's like, how do you handle that? I would get so bored. And, and, and you also say that you actually don't really enjoy getting massage in general, like an hour long massage. You're like, are you, is it over yet? Or? Yeah. And yeah. sometimes my friends are like, I got a three hour massage. I'm like, that sounds like torture. <laughs> I would fucking, my head would explode towards it, the end. And is it because you're sitting there and you're like, uh, you, we, you, must you, I fall asleep or something? Oh, that's relaxing. Then I could, but a lot of times I can't cause my face is all pressed on the, oh yeah, whatever cushion thing they have. And then you start like, your nose gets all stuff. It's awkward. Yeah. And then you leave there with a funny face. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I wasn't in one of those. I was laying down. I was very comfortable. And I bring this up just because. Uh, I had a little bit of a revelation. I already knew this, but it was a reminder that for my body in particular, I'm slow to warm up. I like when I wake up, my pussy is asleep. Like I'm not a morning sex person, but I will have morning sex, but morning sex is not where I have my best orgasms. It's more like there's something about it. It was almost like it's a little naughty. Like there's something about morning sex that I like. In I that just, when you said, when I wake up, all I can think of, when I wake up, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who wakes up next to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I would walk 500 miles. <laughs> That's all I can think about. I tuned out after that. That's why I can't get three hour massages. This massage. is why she can't get massage. She has ADD. <laughs> she tunes out. She's not present. No, I didn't mean to, but I was like, oh, that song. I missed that song. That's what it, and so. Is it Scottish? So what it's happened Scottish? after you woke is up? Is it Irish or Scottish? I hope he's all those things. <laughs> all right. So anyways, <laughs> this was not in the morning. Oh. I was saying. <laughs> I was saying that my pussy is slow to warm up in the morning, especially. But I, even in the middle oh, of the day, oh, your pussy's slow to warm up. My pussy's the best in the middle of the day. When my pussy <laughs> is slow to wake up, I you know I have to work on that one. <laughs> she, you're doing the robot right now. <laughs> All right, back to the point. So, uh, my partner was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna pamper your body," and then he, I, he think, I believe he literally rubbed my vulva external, nothing internal. For like 20 minutes and then I think there was some body massage some nipples etc and then there's some inter- internal stuff but by th- so what I'm saying is when we got to actual sex penetrative sex my arousal was like on steroids it was 10 times better than it would be if there were, was a lot less buildup like honestly for my body and I'm different from you and I'm different from other people the more time we can spend, I'm not even, I'm gonna do foreplay in air quotes, but I'm not even gonna, let's not call it foreplay, let's talk about it as like connection and build up. It just, it, it's a, it's a game changer. Mm-hmm. And I was, I, I was so juicy and alive. And I was like, wow, I forgot about this. Not I forgot, but it was just a good reminder. And that's me. But I think a lot of people are like me, but not everyone. 
there's a lot of research behind how much longer it takes for vulva owners to warm up than um, penis owners, and and not not all penis owners can quickly warm up either, right? Yeah. It, oh yeah. It, it's just it, it's a lot. It's all about the brain game right yeah. there, and what and your the brain individual. is doing. We're all so different. Yeah, we really are. So I think that it's it's great. It takes me some time, and I need foreplay. I need kissing. I need some of that. I can't just have straight genital like under anything like that uh, unless it's with my magic wand but <laughs> then, then, I'm like, then that's fine even sometimes that's a little shocking oh yeah yeah and yeah. my dog like runs and hides. Like he's scared. He's like, Mom, what are you doing? What is that again? baseball bat yeah, that you're like, using? The baseball bat looks like it's going to hurt me. It's going to be crazy. Oh, oh ledge. Uh, okay, so we have a sex question before we do the sex question. <laughs> I would like to announce, I said this on a past podcast, but I'm doing an in-person workshop again for the first that's time. That's so exciting. Since before COVID. That's so exciting. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And this is, so that's a year and a few months that you have it since March of 2020. I've done, yeah, I've done and online stuff. And this is June stuff. 2021. So it, it's, it's been a while. It's wild. And I'm super Super excited. So it's at a uh, contact improv ecstatic dance um, retreat thing. God, there's a better name for it. I was describing it, but I'm not going to say it perfectly. It's with Daniel Molnar. He's putting on. I, I, when I teach with him, I'm like, I am not worthy. He's one of the best teachers I've ever experienced, witnessed, and taught with. Um, oh, you're great too, Chip. You guys are different, great in different ways. <laughs> I was like, didn't you say once that he reminded me of you? You're like, no, no, nope, I did not. I was like, different. oh, damn it. No, it's that you're too, you're about like my spirit animals. Oh, okay. Um, so this retreat is June 18th to the 27th. This is 2021. I'm teaching on the 20th from 2 to 5 p.m. I'm teaching Tantra in Motion. It's a sensual movement workshop that, that combines Tantra with dance. And it's in nature. It's beautiful. It's a fun exploration. And you can go there for three to four days. You can go there for seven days. Uh, it's here in Santa Cruz, California. So if you want to check it out, go to Daniel Molner. That's M O L L N E R for Molner.com. And you can sign up, and I will be there. And I'm so excited to connect with people in person. And it's all outside. So it's still semi, you know, COVID friendly because it's the kind of tail end of the COVID time. So are people know. camping or what are they doing? Yeah, it's a camp out. Wow. Yeah, maybe that's what it's called. Solstice Camp Out. That's probably what it's called. <laughs> I'll be there with my gathering. tent. Gathering. It's a gathering. But no dogs. Uh, I can't bring Perry. Oh, no. Lidgy, you're not going. Are you ready for a sex question? Yeah. All right. This is a fun one. Hello. I've been dating the most wonderful woman for the past five months, and she is fantastic, but she's a virgin. However, she is experienced with oral sex. We're both pretty awkward, and I have had trouble initiating sex in past relationships, and I absolutely do not want to pressure her before she's ready. There's definitely some sexual tension in the air, but neither of us are ready... <laughs> But neither of us are really comfortable making the leap. What are some tips to do it right? I like this question because it feels so innocent to me. <laughs> like it's it's so <laughs> <laughs> your dog, your boss dog's humping. <laughs> He's like, this is how you oh do it right. God. This is how you do it right. That was not planned. All of a sudden during the sex question. Don't yeah. don't do what legend's doing. This is not consensual. Yeah, legend is not ledge. Ledge, get off her foot. Come on, bro. Okay. Okay. So back to the sex question. <laughs> I like this question because it has this, and uh, maybe innocence not the right word. This uh, sweetness and this, uh, the I, I really resonate with the awkward, not necessarily just with sex, but just in general of the kind of shy, timid, awkward. I want to be careful. I want to do this right, and I'm also really afraid of being goofy and. Because um, I felt that way many times in my life in various avenues, so I resonate with that part. Um, okay, so how to do this right? Uh, I really respect you not wanting to pressure her. Um, I think that's really important, and you're feeling the tension in the air, but you don't want to push it uh, too. Like, I mean, obviously, because she's never had sex before. Uh, the first thing I would say is. Um, let's take the pressure off first time sex being really special, magical, unique. It can be that, but I think that when we put this emphasis on it being this huge deal, it never adds more pressure. It never turns out the way you expect it like either. Like sunshine and rainbows and unicorns? No, it's usually a little bit awkward mm -hmm. and uncomfortable and you're like that's what yeah. I was waiting for wait and it's not his first time as the penis owner right. it's her first time which means that there's going to be more discomfort I don't know any vulva owner that had sex for the first time it was like it was so perfect and amazing I felt zero pain you know it's I mean your your body's getting used to something there's a hymen there uh, for most folks although some folks their hymen is already uh, shifted and um, I don't hate the word like torn or um, I'll say altered through other things through, through things other than penetrative sex um, but 
it's new. It's like learning a new skill. So take the pressure off of it being a big deal and figure out more for more like what people need to make it more comfortable. And now it could be like scene and setting. Um, I think going slower than slow, like, oh my God, if someone had told me that the first time I had sex, it would have changed things. Although it only lasted one minute. So that's cool. Is it clear because the person that wrote the question is the penis owner. So is it clear if she, because she's a virgin, they've been together for five months. Is it clear that she is ready to even go that length with him it, or this penis owner? It sounds, well, there's the sexual tension. Yeah. So I think, think that's a good point too. Um, have the conversations around it. They're, they're talking about it. It sounds like, but really, uh, I, especially for her, because it's such a new experience, I think really setting that scene and creating the space for that deeper conversation of, are you fully ready? But that's the reason why I said the, the pressure. Mm -hmm. Cause like, are you ready for this big deal? And that, you know, my pussy would be like, ah, and instead more like what do you think you need to make this more comfortable and this I think the slowness and then really listening to the other person um, using a lot of lubricant doing a lot of warm up we've talked about th we've talked about this in so many episodes about what I'm doing air quotes again foreplay yeah um, but so I mean let's talk about when, the first time you had sex Chip was there a lot of warm up was there a lot of foreplay was there a lot of communication was there a lot of slowness no I don't believe so uh, there was a lot of probably alcohol that I was consuming at a 17 no, for real. <laughs> yeah. to be like, I need to relax. I need to relax because I was very nervous. And I was waiting for a, a long time. So I had put so many different um, analogies in my brain about what would happen or how it should be. And uh, after it was um, the, you know, the first session that we ever experienced was, was um, done. I remember thinking, wow, that wasn't nearly what I expected. I had way more fun masturbating on my own. Yeah. And maybe that was what came up reading the question. Maybe uh, you could check in with her about masturbation. Mm. If it's something that she experiences, because you talked about how she's experienced oral sex. So what about masturbation practices? Could you mutually masturbate together? Maybe you could learn about each other's pleasure. I know if you're both awkward, it might be something weird to to bring up because uh, you mentioned that you're both pretty awkward, but yeah. I can be really awkward too, but you don't have to, you could do a dimly lit area and, and self practice with products or toys and lube, or you could just do hands, but like that could be a kind of a, a, an, a good way to break the ice so you're more comfortable with each other. I think with the awkward to embrace it, out it, be like this is really scary to talk about or I'm really uncomfortable talking about this or this is really awkward talking about sex and especially us having sex for the first time. I just want to out that first and, and not pretend like I got it all together and say this is uncomfortable and awkward and then let's talk about this really challenging thing and then it can make it less awkward. And then when things feel awkward, you can out that too. Ah, this is feeling a little clunky or I need to slow down because this is feeling a little uncomfortable or especially for her I'm feeling pain I need to slow down I need to add more lube um so yeah I think that's a that's a good point you could there. put on some nice music or some erotica in the background yeah. so we could also have someone reading you something sexy you could choose one together a story or uh, a scenario and listen to it together and see what comes up there's a lot of tools out there now for people totally to have the ice broken so the awkwardness whether it's within like having an orgasm in front of someone is awkward or if you just don't exactly know how to approach the situation you can try different tools Ooh, i have an idea Gypsy. exactly wow that's a good one to get things all warmed up so i've, I've actually talked to like three different people in this last week that were saying that Dipsy really helped them with their own arousal. So Dipsy, what is this? D-I-P-S-E-A, everyone. It is a app on your phone that you can listen to to get you turned on anywhere, anytime. So it's erotic short stories. Um, I've listened to it and I've been turned on and feel my pussy pulsating. I have clients, like I was just saying, friends that listen to it, listeners. Um, and it's been a game changer. And the nice thing about it is, is that you literally have control of like, I want to get into my arousal right now. And you can walk down the street, listen to this thing and nobody knows. So you can do it for yourself or ready when you're getting ready to meet with a partner. And not only do they offer a lot, I mean, endless different they add new stories all the time to their to their app but they also have different sleep stories or soundscapes you can listen to so if you don't want to listen to erotica every day you have other options to help you drift off and a peaceful slumber i need sleep stories slash soundscapes every single night so dipsy has been my go-to and for our listeners of this show that's shameless sex it's you dipsy is offering a 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash shameless that's a 30-day free trial when you go to d-i-p-s-e-a stories.com slash shameless dipsystories.com slash shameless y'all all right 
Ready for a bio? Yeah. Shasta Townsend and Ian Lavalle. I assume. Ooh. <laughs> That's cool. Go with it. Lavalle or Lavalle. I like Lavalle. <laughs> are our best selling authors, married BIPOC sex and relationship experts, and are leading a global love movement based in ancient Eastern thought, indigenous wisdom, and cutting edge science. To learn more, go to 7 Star Love. That's the number 7 Star Love.com. But first, one of my favorite condiments ever is hot sauce because I'm always adding it to everything. I even have an entire shelf in my fridge just for hot sauce. So when my friend Will gave me his hot sauce to try, I fell in love and went through a whole bottle in two days. If you're a hot sauce lover like me, you gotta try Willy Willy Hot Sauce. It's the perfect blend of spice with a little tang and some balanced sweetness. Seriously, it's Willy Willy good. Plus, if you want a little Santa Cruz in you, now is your chance because each bottle is made from locally farmed ingredients from Santa Cruz. Think sexy, hot, and full of flavor, just like Amy. And if you're looking for the perfect Father's Day gift or you just want to spice up someone's life, look no further because this makes a willy willy great gift. Well, I love hot sauce too, but I can't do as much heat as April, and that's why I love Willy Willy Sexy Sauce. It's got bold flavor with a sultry, sexy taste you can feel on the front of your tongue, but it won't smack you in the taste buds. It's perfect for your huevos or your tacos. Actually, it's perfect for pretty much anything you put into your mouth. And right now, because you listen to Shameless Sex, you can get two for one. That's one Willy Willy Hot Sauce and one Willy Willy Sexy Sauce for just $10. Go to willywillyhotsauce.com slash shameless to get your two for one now. That's W-I-L-L-Y-W-I-L-L-Y hotsauce.com slash shameless. Wow, that's a really, really great deal. All right, it's interview time. All right, everyone, it is episode time. Uh, This time it's just little old me, no April. April is um, not with us today, but we will send her our love. And um, I miss you. I miss you already, Chip. She's my Chip and I'm her dip. Uh, Today we are talking about, as you probably already heard in the intro, about non-ejaculatory orgasms. A lot of folks are like, what? Is that even possible? We're specifically talking uh, for for penis owners, because we do know that um, a lot of vulva owners are having orgasms that do not involve ejaculation, and a lot of them also are too. But today is specifically about penises, and I am here with our guests Shasta and Ian. I'm going to just dive right into the same question that we asked all of our guests. If you two can, um, we have a little intro in the bio, but tell us a little bit more about how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality. Ian and I are actually married. And we have been having, I guess, delicious monogamous sex for, I always get the number wrong, 20 years, <laughs> Eight, <laughs> 18, 18. <laughs> 18 years. Um, and we never set out to be like, let's work in the world of sexuality. We actually came to a point where we were having some struggles in our own relationship, our own marriage and all transparency. Uh, we had a background in human potential and spirituality And we are high achieving entrepreneurs. And about 10 years ago, we were like, man, our life, our whole everything really sucks. We were more like roommates than anything. We were still, I think, having sex, but it wasn't anything close to what it is now. And we went to literally everybody under the sun to be like, please help us figure out how to get the spark back, to figure out how to be friends again, not like despise each other kind of thing. And honestly, you know, Amy, nothing like nothing worked. It seemed like most of the counseling and stuff we were going to was taking us further and further apart. So we dove into a lot of things, neuroscience, um, you know, spirituality, all those kinds of things. But we also really dove into Tantra. Well, the truth was, Ian, you were, you had been practicing um, non-ejaculatory orgasms from the day really we got together, which I'll stop speaking and let you talk about that. But for me, the big shift in doing this work in particular was really the breakdown in our own relationship and realizing that sex, intimacy, relationship, marriage could actually be the doorway to greatness rather than a distraction. And so for me as a woman, I mean, this could be a whole other topic and talk, uh, really just saying, I, I want to dive into this. At the time, I wrote a best-selling book about women's sexuality. And women were kind of coming out of the woodwork saying, how do I do this? How do I get my male partner on board with uh, sexuality? And so then, of course, it just seemed like a natural invitation that I was like, 
you know, babe, we need to be doing this together. And people in our life are always, we're also like, what the fuck are you two doing? Like, are you actually this happy? And um, so, yeah, we, we started to dive basically deep into not only our own journey, everything that we teach is we walk the talk and we started to share this with couples and individuals. So um, it's kind of my perspective of how we really dove into this. And it's been it's been a wild and wet journey. Mm-hmm. Wild and wet journey. <laughs> yeah. But you were studying Tantra like 20 years ago, really. Um, yeah, 18. You're like the mm-hmm. unicorn. Um, <laughs> well, the non-ejaculatory unicorn. <laughs> the best kind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. It, when Shas and I got together 18 years ago, I'm glad that she says 20 because it, you know, it just uh, – Makes me think we got two more years together for sure. Um, <laughs> um, she was on her way to India actually to study yoga. And I'd only been to like maybe a half a dozen yoga classes. I was like, I don't know a lot about India. So I, you know, took up uh, a few books, the Kama Sutra and started to study Tantra and energy. And the opportunity came along to study non-ejaculatory orgasm and practice by myself while Shasta was in India for three and a half, four months. And really just carried it over into our sexual relationship when, when we got together from there. And I will say this, Amy, that when I finally saw Ian four months later and he had this superpower, we actually broke the bed. We were oh, yeah, in an we, Airbnb. No, it wasn't even an Airbnb. It was oh, a B and B at the time we met in London, England. And uh, yeah, we just literally, I was like, what the hell happened? And we broke the bed. And yeah. I'm pretty sure the B&B owner was like, get out of my house. You disgusting, <laughs> filthy. <laughs> and she, she basically gave us, um, she gave us a bowl of Fruit Loops and said, basically get the fuck out. And we missed our flight. <laughs> <laughs> you get out, you, you sinners with all that pleasure and joy. I mean, I guess if you broke the bed, they might be a little upset about that, but um, yeah. Or it's the, some of the guests are like, wait, uh, I'm, I'm envious. I want some of that. So let's talk about what that is. So non-ejaculatory orgasms, which I went for penis owners. So obviously you can have bed breaking hot sex. Why might someone want to learn how to do this? Can all penis owners learn how to do this? I think uh, everyone can do it. Uh, the reason I took it up was really to not just close an orgasm gap be, because we were always orgasmic, but it was really to just see how far we could take the sexual pleasure with one another. And I think, you know, just when we talk about this idea of non ejaculatory orgasm for men um, or penis owners, is, you know, when we think about orgasm for men, is it's generally this, you know, short, we would call it like almost like a sneeze. And so you have ejaculation that comes with that, uh, no pun intended. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a sort of fast release, whereas, and you could speak better to this than I can, but being with a man and witnessing this for two decades is that as a man, it's like an internal orgasm. So you're still having an orgasm, right? Men are always like, well, do I get to, when is it my turn? Do I get to orgasm? And it's like, yes, you're actually having much more intense orgasms, more of a full body intensive orgasm. Can you speak more to that? I think that's Sure. I think um, really the only, the best way I could describe it is really is you're actually in control of your energy. And we, uh, we all, you know, believe and know that um, sex is and with a partner is a combination of those energies. When you're actually in control of your energy and harness your energy, you can like guide it through your body. So it's actually just uh, even another way to say it is just a like, for me, it feels like an internal heat that's um, really just rising and flowing through your body almost uncontrollably, but you're still in control of it. Mm. So that's the part. So the internal orgasm, whereas so would you say most penis owners are experiencing something that's more that external, I think you said kind of like a sneeze, right? And I've experienced this too, at different types of orgasms with my body, where it's been like, oh, just a couple seconds of euphoria and pleasure. And that's nice. And then I'm almost like just kind of back to normal. Maybe I feel a little more relaxed. And then I've experienced this orgasms that feel like my whole body is involved. Sometimes they're a little more transcendent. Sometimes they feel like they could go on uh, forever. Is that what you're speaking to? Is it kind of a similar experience, but with, for a penis owner? Yeah, it's, um, when you say go on forever, it's really just, uh, 
a rise of energy, control of energy, but it just seems like it's almost like, uh, and the way to I could maybe describe it is is more like a, um, a the female uh, female orgasm where you're riding or surfing that wave, where it just you know there's a uh, intensity build up and then kind of a, a, a semi climax and then um, a reharnessing of the energy and then another you ride another wave and it just you can actually you know prolong it and go on and on and on until you know, basically black out <laughs> <laughs> until you pass out or break the bed basically yeah. <laughs> the bed's broken party's over uh i yeah so okay so what i'm hearing is one some of the benefits of this are you you have more uh control whether it's just for yourself for if you're playing with yourself or you're playing with a partner whether it's you want to close the orgasm gap whether you want to control how long you get to play but then you've experienced more pleasure um and my so i could just speak again i'll come back to my experience with the orgasms that i've had when i've had these full body transcendent orgasms or the ones that feel like there's just a lot more vibrance to them i feel transformed after and I feel nourished in a way that's different than just like that quick release like that quick release is really nice I'm not going to and I I personally don't think that there's a hierarchy of orgasms pleasure is pleasure please listeners don't let anyone tell you that your orgasm is inferior um enjoy it however you want to and we have the ability to learn to have pleasure and orgasms in all these different ways um so I guess another question I have for you is uh, do you feel that this and I'll, I'll ask a little bit later about how it funnels into relationships, but as an individual, as a penis owner, having these orgasms, do you feel like it changes you for the better? Like it fills you up and enlivens you and you know, changes your day and, and in your health, perhaps? Uh, I think 100%. It changes your day, the way you feel. It's, it's almost um, exhausting to go through an orgasm like that. It's like you got a B12 shot or you, like a life force energy where you just, it's, uh, it's, they're great in the morning. Nothing just, nothing like starting a day like that. <laughs> There's also just your question, Amy, because uh, I love, I love the field of like biohacking. And now that I'm in my mid forties, I'm always like, how do we, you know, stay in this place of like health and wellness? And there is all kinds of research, though it's really hard to find on orgasm. And when men have a non-ejaculatory orgasm, and I'll speak to the female side in a second too, when men have a non-ejaculatory orgasm, what's happening, and Ian's talking about energy, and it's literally like this energy, yes, it's like a heart opening, mind expansive, you know, kind of consciousness transforming, but actually at a physical level, and at a neurobiological level, what's happening is men actually have a rush of hormones that are released. It's called prolactin. And prolactin is normally only associated with women. And what's interesting about this is in men, when they have non-ejaculatory, like heart open, life-changing sort of reality changing orgasms, when prolactin is released, it is a hormone that actually allows them to feel bonded. It allows you to feel loved. It allows you to feel connected. You feel in harmony with the universe. And what's interesting is about this so often when we talk about men um you know the, these are these are not necessarily out of the old toxic masculine paradigms you know uh pronouns or descriptions we use for men and yet men crave this this sense of connection just as much as women and so what's interesting is at a sort of like sexual skill level you become an amazing lover as a as a penis owner and at a personal and individual level, you know, and Ian's spoken to his experience so beautifully, but at that neurobiological level, you're actually shifting your biochemistry. You got to think about that. That's pretty freaking cool. And so when we're in that state of harmony and connection, we actually then, uh, cat, we kind of catalyze anti-aging uh, hormones and we actually stimulate parts of our cells kind of called the mitochondria. And I'm a super like science nerd, so I don't mean to get <laughs> too nerdy, but I think these are great things to know about ourselves, you know, and then for women, when we are having you know, really heart open vaginal, uh, as you talked about, Amy, like life transforming orgasms, we are releasing feel good hormones as well. And we then have a, a literally a, a reprogramming of the brain and the biochemistry that actually then again triggers these hormones 
not only bonding hormones, but anti-aging hormones. So I always kind of joke that I, I, I biohack orgasms, but I just wanted to throw that in there because there's so many reasons, you know, to improve your sexual skills and improve your own sexual health and, and pleasure is one of them. And we're huge advocates for that too, but there's actually so much more, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, boosting our own immunity. Why not have sex and boost our immunity through non-ejaculatory orgasms for men? Yeah. You know? Totally. And it was also interesting that it's, there's a, a difference when in traditional heterosex, right. And penis owners are uh, ejaculating that depletes their energy often. And, um, and not everyone, but for a lot of folks, and especially as, as they get older in the refractory period, et cetera. Whereas for vulva owners, a lot of times orgasm and actually, and even ejaculation can charge them up a little more. And there might be this feeling of mismatch. And I don't want to just, just speak to heterosexual relationships, but I think there's a lot of benefits there, whether it is pleasure or it's some health, health tips and health purposes. So, oh, speaking of tips, by the way, how about some tips and how to's our listeners are like, but how do I do it? What do I do? And I'm sure that we, this is something you teach, you know, for, you talk about this for hours and hours, you have workshops, you work privately with people on this. So I know we can't share every single tip, but what are some of your top tips and how to's of how people can learn to do this? I would say the first tip I would give is the, we all know orgasm starts in the brain and, um, and it's a, a focus on that. Um, the first tip would be really creating that intention of what you're trying to accomplish in that and focusing on that. Um, my second tip would be really practice it by yourself, edging yourself up to a certain level, focus on your breath, learn how to control yourself without ejaculating. Um, and then the third tip would be really get control of your pelvic floor, pulling up on your pelvic floor, um, really, because, you know, the penis is just a muscle, you can, you can, you can make it harder, you can make it more focused, more dynamic by just really strengthening it and working in your, in your lower core that way. Is this like Kegel exercises you're talking about too? Like the tightening and releasing of the pelvic floor for penis owners? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. that's essentially what it is, is you're drawing the scrotum up and in. And I think as Ian just said, you know, the first thing is, is that so often when we think about our genitals, and I think for men in particular, it's like, oh, it's got a mind of its own, I have no control over it. And mm -hmm. that's total BS, right? Like, so Ian's saying, make a connection and actually decide that, you know, I am the master of my domain. And you make this mind body connection, which we know is so powerful, to saying it's conscious masturbation, you don't take yourself to the point of ejaculation, you take Take yourself right to that point and then just as you're about to release you actually pull up those pelvic floor muscles like your genital muscles in men it's the scrotum basically all the way up into your lower abdominals right and and you would practice that and again and again and then it's interesting because even when we're having sex there's times where i can actually feel that he's doing that so he I, he has to actually like pause for a moment and be like i'm actually drawing this up and in so that it doesn't release outwards yeah, it's, it's practice. Um, it's, you know, it, uh, when we first started practicing, it wasn't uh, like, oh my God, I could hold on forever either. There's nothing like there's, uh, it really is a practice and it's a, a dance and communication with your partner and learning how to move and how to breathe and how to control those muscles. Um, but that, that would be my tips. The intention, learn how to breathe with it, learn how to pull up and on your scrotum in your pelvic floor. Um, and then, Maybe the next tip after that would be learn how to move with your partner. We all know that women are riding a wave or riding that buildup to an orgasm during intercourse. And one of the things I think that you can, men can do if they're trying to create an unejaculatory orgasm is actually fuck up their partner's orgasm mm -hmm. by changing a rhythm or having to stop. I think it's just a dance to play with and know that, you know, communication with your partner, like this is what we're trying to achieve. And let's, you know, when we get there, we get there, but let's not mess up our partner's orgasm on the way to something. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast was made possible by Uberloop. It's a luxurious silicone lubricant that enhances sex and intimacy. We receive emails from listeners who have tried Uberloop and the feedback is unanimous. We never knew lube could be this good. It's also less likely to throw off the pH than most other lubes, and there are thousands of doctors recommending Uber Lube to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks experiencing dryness. Uber Lube is without a doubt my favorite lube. It has no flavor, no scent, and feels absolutely amazing on my body. 
And it isn't just for sex. I use it to tame my hair frizzies, to prevent chafing, and I even put some in my mouth before an oral sex session. Totally ups my blowjob game. Oh, and the bottle, it's beautiful. It looks like a cosmetic product. So I just leave it out on my nightstand totally shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off plus free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by omgs.com. OMGS is a research-based online program that teaches you all about how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied thousands of vulva owners to find out how they orgasm and then made beautiful animated modules and super honest short videos to give you ways to reach even more pleasure. I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it's been changing their lives. We all know pleasure is fluid and ever-changing, so why not add more tools to your pleasure tool belt? OMGS is for everyone, so whether you are a vulva owner or you just love vulvas, OMGS will give you the techniques to get your O face on. There are two seasons to choose from and hundreds of gorgeous videos to explore. So go see what science says about pleasure and visit omgs.com slash shameless. That's omgs.com slash shameless to get $5 off your OMGS access. Again, omgs.com slash shameless. Go check it out. Now back to the show. Yeah, I like that. And I, 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 we, I feel feel like every single podcast episode, the answer often is like harnessing your brain, first of all, not getting stuck in the, in the mind and all the thoughts and all the, those, those processes that go on that pull us out of our bodies, but also really connecting to our genitals too. And not in a really heady way. Like, what are, uh, are they going to act the way I want them to, or are they going to perform? What do they look like? Where are they? Are they good enough? But more so um, really feeling them. And now there's a muscle toning thing too, that, it, that is, is a real a real thing. Uh, and I think also doing, you know, Kegels for vulva owners, penis owners, it just also helps us to have awareness of that part of our body too, whether it's strengthening or not, it's bringing blood flow there because you're putting, you're moving energy in that part and not like the hippy dippy moving energy. I'm literally like, I'm doing it right now. Everyone I'm tightening my pussy. I'm relaxing my pussy. I'm tightening. Are you doing it too? Cool. We're doing it together. Uh, so it is, it is a real thing that has a lot of, of, benefits. Uh, and, um, here's, here's some more on how you can learn how to harness your orgasms. So and I'm now I'm curious, we already talked a little bit about, you know, y'all breaking beds and things. How does this show up in re- sex and relationships um, with your partner? And we've talked about this a little bit, but how does this change the intimacy between partners in the actual relationship itself? So I think, you know, to speak from a female perspective, a sexual uh, perspective is the truth is, is that, I, I mean, I'm quite orgasmic. I can actually have an orgasm fairly quickly. And I think it's partly that I've trained myself to be that way. But many times as women, we need a little bit more time. We just need, as Ian said, to build the wave, ride the wave. So when you're with a male partner who isn't like, you know, uh, like three second man, that there is the ability to sustain erection, which also non-ejaculatory orgasm uh, contributes to, to actually, uh, not only to sustain, to actually get harder and thicker and to also then sustain intercourse and be extremely present to your female partner. It means that you are going to actually have as a woman and a man in that, in a heterosexual partnership, a more satisfying sexual experience. You are literally going to come together. And there is something so deeply intimate, powerful, gorgeous, beautiful about literally having an orgasm together with your partner and to have this explosive experience that you are having with this one, you know, in our relationship, we're in a monogamous relationship, this one person. And to really feel for me, I just honestly feel like Ian totally has me. Like, he totally has me. He's totally present, knows what he's doing. I can completely trust him. Now there's something to be said about that because whatever is happening in our intimate life and in our, you know, if we call it in the bedroom, it's going to translate out into your wider life as well. You know, and I talked at the start of this is that Ian and I, you know, a decade ago, we're like not in a super awesome place. And one of the ways that we created a deep level of trust and intimacy is actually through sex. 
And it seemed counterintuitive at the time to me. I was like, uh, I don't know. And, but yet it's actually because he has these skills, because he's present, because I've allowed myself to go to these places with him as well. I feel like not only is our sex life transformative, but it's actually, again, the gateway to transformation, which brings all of that into, you know, into your life. I mean, I, I feel like I can meet a couple and be like within three seconds, know if they're having great sex or not having great sex, just by how they interact with each other outside of the bedroom. And so learning how to do these things, men, is not only going to improve, you know, your own satisfaction, your own health, but it is going to deepen your relationship. You're going to feel rock solid. And that's what, if we're in a committed relationship, that's what, that's what we all want. I believe that. that's why they, what they call it life force energy for a reason. Um, I, have, I have one question for you. That's a little bit of sidetrack, but uh, kind of came to me earlier and I forgot about it. Can you, so what about like quickies, right? I think a lot of times people think of tantric sex or non ejaculatory orgasms for penis owners as being like many, many hours long, like sting, you know, does this apply to people who are really busy? Does this something that is still can be incorporated into when I, and I always say quickie, a quickie could be like, we only have a 10 minute window to play. And that doesn't necessarily mean penetration, but does it have to be this like many hour long thing? Cause I also know some vulva owners who don't want to have sex for many hours. Um, so how does, how does that apply? What's your opinion on that? I think that you should never turn down a quickie when one's offered to you. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it be over the kitchen counter or in the backyard. Like pizza, there's no really yes. there's no bad pizza. <laughs> um, no, I'm I'm like not going to be judgmental on anybody having a quickie or really it goes back to the um, the intention behind what you're what you've set out for yourself, what you have time for. Um, really, Shasta and I both lead very busy lives, so. Sometimes we actually have to schedule, you know, when we connect with one another. I think the thing, and you're asking such a great question too, Amy, is that, uh, you know, non-ejaculatory practice has been a part of tantric sex. And so we tend to think of that as like, oh, it means, and because thank, you know, blessing, um, his <laughs> like seven six, hours. six, seven, <laughs> 12 hours, you know, with Trudy there. And that's not really what tantric sex is about. And so, you know, tantra really is this idea of like, everything is divine. And so sex is divine. And so how can I allow sex to be this doorway, this gateway to something like really delicious and robust and life affirming and non ejaculatory orgasm is a part of that. And, and it doesn't mean that it's going to take me seven hours to, you know, hold a non ejaculatory orgasm or to get my female partner to orgasm. I mean, we, we literally, have times where it's 10 or 15 minute quickies. And if Ian sets his mind to say, this is, this is, I'm holding non-ejaculatory, you know, intention, then that's what happens. Mm -hmm. And so I think we, you know, it, there's so much misinformation. I love your question. Um, but yeah, this isn't about like, oh gosh, I have to, you know, like dance around in a circle uh, for an hour and, and do all this preparation. It's lit you can, I mean, there's times when we have ritualistic sex, but it's more like this idea of for men, how do I get control over this um, amazing part of my body? And why, why do I want to do that? And, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about that, but it's a great question. I would also say like to, to the men or the penis owners listening out there, like, I'm not saying don't ever ejaculate or don't try, try to focus on just trying to create that kind of orgasm. It, you know, the ejaculatory orgasm is great too. And if that's, if that's what's um, on the schedule or um, in the day or what, what, what feels good for you and your partner at the time, I think, I think that's what you, that's what you should be focused on in the moment. I was actually going to, going to be my next question for you about uh, that came to mind as well, because a lot of people are like, wait, do I never ejaculate? Do I never come? And I've heard lots of different perspectives on this. I, and I won't quote this correctly. I remember hearing something from Charles Muir and Montauk Chia. And, and I think there's, and I, again, I don't remember who said what, um, but I think I've heard some people say, uh, you know, it's healthy at least once a week to ejaculate and actually have that, that fluid moving through you. It's, it's good for all the organs and things. I've had some people say, no, it's actually once some of, and I've had some, there's so many different perspectives, but what, um, do you have any ideas on that? And are you up, but I hear that you are saying, doesn't mean that you never do it, but do you have, is there anything particular that you feel about that? I haven't really, I don't have a schedule or a routine based on like a weekly or like monthly schedule. Um, I think it's really, it's, it's a really natural thing. Just whatever happens, happens in, in our sex life together. It would be 
you know, sometimes twice, sometimes once a week for an ejaculatory orgasm. We do have a robust sex life, I think. I think better than average. So um, once or twice a week, sometimes not, a, sometimes not at all. I think I would suggest what feels good for the person. And I think that, you know, here's how we often teach people to think about this is not ejaculatory orgasm is like good scotch, mm-hmm. you know, or like eating, I mean, I, we're paleo. So like eating uh, like good steak. Okay. I'm not going to eat a good steak every single meal, every single day, but I'm going to really, really enjoy it. And I probably am going to enjoy it frequently. And this is this idea of, I think that often when we think about sex and orgasm, especially for men, it's like this quick release, the sneeze kind of energy. And there's times where you're like, that's what I need. I need a quick release. I want to get off. Um, it's like, I have a hunger and I need to satisfy it. And then there's times where you're like, I actually want to like really be satisfied. I'm not interested in a sneeze. I want to feel this full body, amazing experience. And you know, to be intentional about that, as Ian is saying, and what, you know, what you're speaking to. So we have a background in Tantra and and from the Tantric perspective, what they say is women, I love this. It's like women should have orgasms at least three times a week Mm -hmm. and to keep the, you know, to keep the energy moving and, and keep yourself youthful. And men should actually have ejaculatory orgasms, basically what you said, Amy, like once a week, Mm -hmm. but these are all just dogmas also, you know, these are all kind of guidelines. I think it's really like, what is meaningful for you? What do you want to do? And I think there's times in like in our life and in your experience, Ian, where you were like, I am actually going to do this every single time. I want to know what that, what that could do for me. I want to experiment with this. I want to experience this. And I think the point of all of this is that you're expanding your, your repertoire, you're expanding your, you know, what's offered on the table, so to speak, you know, life is a buffet. Why not allow your sex life to be a buffet to be able to learn how to experience different things in your body? Yeah, that's very fitting for the shameless sex um, uh, belief system is that we make our own rules. And so there isn't one way to do things other than consent. We're, that's kind of our main rule that that we always abide by for all, uh, you know, with this the belief that all consensual sex is good sex. Other than that, the world is your oyster and you pick and choose what works for you. And there's no one perfect way to do it. And I think that's really helpful. And I also think it's generally... Um, potentially harmful when folks approach sex in a way that needs to be this one way. And if you're not doing it that way, then, then there's something wrong with you. And uh, that that's because we're all so different. I've seen diagrams of people's genitals and, and where the nerve endings are. They're so different. Some people have more nerve endings here, some more there. Um, and then you can take into account all of our experiences or traumas or shame and all the things that shape us. Um, and then your life will change too, right? Like say, you know, right now we get to have sex four times a week and um, oh, now we have kids. Wow, we have sex four times a month and uh, to life has shifted. And so we shift with the times and sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back. But really it is about getting clearer and or like what you said, the, your individual in, intention of what works for you, probably moment for moment or day to day. Can you tell us a little more about, I know you said, and I think maybe this is off air, you said you have a lot of free content, free offerings, and you also work with people. Can you tell us a little more about what that is, what people can expect, how they can work with you, how they can find you? Yeah, thank you. So the easiest way to find us is literally seven, the number seven, seven star love.com, because we're all about living a seven star, not just five star life uh, in and outside the bedroom. So if you go to seven star love.com, literally backslash start here, there is a ton of free tools. Uh, including videos, podcasts, posts, all kinds of things. We actually have a marriage and intimacy quiz that we've just launched as well. So it's a great place to start to just dive even deeper into some of the things that we've been talking about today. And basically we work with what we would call high performing uh, individuals and couples who just want more. They're like, I know there's more, there's more to life. There's more to sex. There's more to love and let's investigate that. And so sharing some of the techniques that we've we've shared today um but there's there's lots of cool juicy stuff on our website so seven starlove.com you can find all the juiciness there squirty juicy gushy deliciousness or not maybe you're not <laughs> squirting or juicing because you're you know um, uh withholding but you're still having juicy orgasms inside 
Um, so everyone heard. So that's seven, the, the number seven star love.com where you can find Shasta and Ian's offerings and at least go check out the free content because uh, free content. Well, why not? It's silly not to. Um, and I really appreciate you two taking the time to share with us and our listeners and uh, God, I miss you, April. It's so weird without you. I feel like a half of me is gone, but don't worry, Chip. I held it down. I held it for us. Let's see if I can. She's the closer. Okay. So April would say, Hey, Chip, I'm going to pretend like she's here. Hey, Chip, what's our favorite word? I'd be like, um, wine. And she'd be like, yeah, wine. And she'd tell you all about margins wine and why we love margins wine. And, uh, we've been fans of margins wine for years It is locally owned and operated run by a woman named Megan Bell. And so it's women owned and operated and the wine is delicious. We just tried, I think it's called the rugged heart, which I'm a big fan of. I'm looking at it. They're like, what are you looking at? Because I have this bottle right here by my feet actually. And that will soon be in my mouth. And if you would like to try margins wine, go to marginswine.com. You can use some coupon codes to get a discount on three or more. I believe it's shameless 10. You get 10% off three or more bottles and shameless 15. You get 15% off three or more bottles. Uh, the codes are also in our show notes. Go check it out and please write us a review on iTunes. If you haven't done so, it really helps us. It helps us get the message out there. It helps get more listeners. We are global, which is awesome because there's a lot of places in the world where people don't have access to sex education. So when you write us a positive review, it helps us to get the message out there to the masses. You're actually helping with sex education when you do that. Lastly, let's see. Oh oh, yeah. See you next Tuesday, everyone. And ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.